Hello, hello everyone. Um, this is the Astro Tarot Show and I'm going to give a little bit of an astro update. Um, this is the, what I look at when I am doing the uh, astrology. And I look at actually a progression to see what's going on, see what major events were happening and that sort of thing. And um, got some marks here. We'll talk about those in just a moment. Um, if you didn't listen to my show last night, um, I urge you to go um, listen to it. I will be making that public today. Um, this is Thursday, the 25th of May, and I'll be making that public today. But I wanted to do a little bit of an update because I wanted you to see some of this stuff that's going on, okay? So here we have, when we had that new moon in um, Taurus, okay? It, it was a it was a part of a um, a grand cross it was an um, an earth grand cross so it was fixed it was a fixed sign and earth is very fixed Taurus is Taurus energy is tried and true it's um, maintain keep going um, steady is the course kind of thing so when um, when they met up in Taurus, that was really fertile time for planting a new seed. Uh, Mars in the, you know, Mars has moved on right now. You can see Mars right here. Um, he is at two degrees of Gemini. And I'm sorry, he's at two degrees of, uh, of Leo. And the sun is at three degrees of Gemini. But when he was, when Mars was in Cancer, he wasn't, you know, it was about acting within. So he was worried about his own safety, his own security. Um, he wasn't, he was about protecting that. And now Venus is coming through these and he's, she's going to catch up with Mars. That is another story. These are our celestial lovers. So this is quite, this is really good energy here because she's coming through and healing some of those wounds. This could be something that's related to your mother, um, the nurturing uh, aspect sort of uh, thing, maybe being the mother within yourself. Um, but also, you know, and I was reminded this morning, um, you know, show yourself grace. Learn to show yourself grace. Uh, we're not all perfect. And with Venus in Cancer, this is wonderful, wonderful energy. That's our, this is our divine feminine immersing herself into the healing water of Cancer. This is home. This is safety. Um, this is our emotions. This is getting in touch with um, our um, emotional, energetic selves, okay? But what I want to really look at is that, and, and I'm going to look at more of this in a different video, because video, I don't want to make these too long, um, that Mars, when he moved out of Cancer and moved into Leo, that was a release. This was initiation through the heart chakra. And um, like I said, I'm going to have another video on that because that is something that we really need to talk about that's going on right now. And this is, um, that new moon was that no turning back kind of energy. This is, this is the energy that we've been having. And I know that you've been hearing me say this, but this is the, this is the time. This is a point of when he moved from this to, from, um, cancer to Leo, it was a release. It was releasing pressure, um, because that, um, that new moon, um, you know, at that time, Mars was at those the first degree, uh, zero degrees of Leo. So he was opposing Pluto. Um, and that was um, a release of built up pressure. Um, on the 23rd, Mars squared Jupiter. And that was, that was tremendous energy too. This was a very, um, that's one of the most important aspects of this month, actually. Again, go listen to my astrology. Um, and that will really, you know, highlight some of that information for you. Uh, that was very important because this is where, this is where the, the, um, that Grand Cross was where the, um, the spiritual Jupiter representing our top three chakras, our throat, our third eye, and our crown 
was magnified and then the new moon Taurus earth that represents our root our sacral and our solar plexus this is Mars represents the joining of those two and and Jupiter is offering protection of this so this is a releasing um, one of going forward. Now, what I want us to look at, and I've hinted on before, is the fixed star Algol, um, which represents Medusa, um, and the actual beheading. This represents the beheading of Medusa, and she's right here at the last few degrees of Taurus. So, um, this is this represents an ending. When the sun passed through um, Algol, that was a beheading of a solar, uh, like uh, someone of power. Um, you know, that was like, um, it would be a king. It would be uh, someone of high leadership, a beheading of that. And it's about, this is, um, it's over. It's over. So this is the conflict and disruption that has been happening is over. It's like we're seeing now. As as the sun moved into Gemini, he is seeing a clearer vision of what all of this was about. Because you see, there's just a big lineup. We have Chiron that is still in Aries. We have um, Jupiter that is at one degrees of Aries. And, you know, there is our north node. Okay. So we see this nice lineup here. Um, and when the sun did go through, when, when he entered into Gemini's realm, which is air, this is earth, this is the material, okay? This is the physicalness of it. And then we go up to air, which is, you know, a higher, which is um, lighter. So we're going to be moving through this in an easier way. When the sun moved into Gemini on the 21st, um, by the 22nd, he was forming a sextile with Mercury, which is really, um, that is actually aiding us in, um, aiding us into uh, understanding and communicating better. Um, here is Mercury right here. So remember, he had to backtrack. Okay, he went all the way back to five degrees of Taurus. And, and, and don't worry, he's going to check, he's going to catch up. Matter of fact, in June, and I'm going to do a video about June, that is going to be an impactful month because we got Mercury himself is going to go through three signs, if that tells you anything. So this is going to be some fast moving energy. This is going to be, um, we're going to have to be quick thinking. Um, you're going to have to remember to take time and slow down in June because you're going to miss stuff. But now getting back to um, our last, um, the last part of May here, um, when that, when, when Mars here opposed Pluto, okay, and then the square, because we see this is still going on, Pluto is still squaring over here in these degrees, right? Um, and he is squaring our nodes. Most importantly, he's squaring the nodes. And this is the north node. This is where we're going. This is the south node. This represents where we've been. So this is what we are releasing and, you know, getting go, letting go of. Whereas the north node is what we are moving into. Okay. That represents a power struggle. Um, it represents, uh, and this is with top places of um, top down authority that are being ran by those with more, that have more power, more money. Um, remember, you know, Jupiter is about the excessive, right? It's about um, expansion. So we can see where um, this is, this is going against a power struggle of those who have more than the others that do not. So this is like king versus the peasants. And Pluto is, um, we can't fully see the what's going on here, or we can't fully see our power because as, as long as Pluto is in Aquarius, that is about power to the to society. That is about you know um, 
you know, power to the people. Well, when Pluto is there, it kind of puts that hidden um, energy into it. So it's showing how this is being kept under cover that is hurting the people. I'm also going to go into, there's going about more uncovering um, with things in medicine and science and um, technology such as AI. And Jupiter is coming into this mix more and more. So this, this um, aspect between Jupiter and Mars, they're coming into that aspect more and more. And is all that's going to do is it's going to empower Jupiter and it's going to and um, empower that Jupiter Mars meet up here. See, when Jupiter goes here and, and, and meets with Mars, he's saying, look, remember who you are. When he passed out of cancer, okay, and he goes into Leo, Leo reminds him of his of, of, you know, that's that solar plexus energy empowerment of remember who you are. Remember who you are and empowers that, ignites that flame again. So Mars is going to start standing up for himself. And he isn't a quiet, he's been in a, he's been in a battle, okay? Because here we can see where this, um, the energy going on between him and Pluto, this can go into like um, those dark areas of society in general that will overpower or shadow others for the sake of their own ego. And, you know, this is not, that is going to have to go. We have to remember of respecting of each other's boundaries. You can't say that you are having freedom and you're having all of this great, wonderful stuff when you're causing other people to suffer and when you're causing other people harm. So this is where this energy is coming in. Um, and when Jupiter was went into Taurus, he brought that spirituality. He brought that, that um, his good energy into the earth, into the physical, and our bodies represent the physical. Our bodies represent this, this um, material world. And when he did that, it changed it. It changed things a bit. It, it brought power back to Mars, which represents I am, which represents that is humanity, and, and that is the fool waking up to get back on his hero's journey. So, and Sedna, Sedna is, um, she's uh, the um, Inuit goddess of the sea. And, you know, her own father, you know, threw her out. You have to, um, you'll have to go back and um, listen to my story about Sedna. But, you know, it's a little different. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the Inuit people will be able to say it better than me. But it was about, you know, um, about a transformation. It's about letting go. It's like she kept clinging to being her father's child when she had a bigger destiny ahead of her. Because it is from her that you know, the, some of the sea life was created. And we have to see how that is unfolding for ourselves as well. Because if we are still gripping on to, to the past, we can't allow the newness to come into our life. Um, you know, we're not meant to be our father's daughter, our mother's daughter, so forth. We're not to meant to be that for the rest of our lives. We're meant to grow and through this transformation to transform into something else. Um, and she's right here with Argal as well. Algal as well. And um, I'm telling you, that name, Medusa, let's just call her Medusa. Um, you know, 
that she has a sordid past as well. Um, this is about, and this was a transformation as well for her. And with the more that we have this energy between Mars and Jupiter, um, that is giving us a higher vision, uh, especially as the sun moves into Gemini. We're giving more of that higher vision. When he was in Earth and, and he was having this this um, this new moon, it was like, what do we need to do? What do, what do I need to do? So um, it was like, an, in order to see our next step, we have to be willing to take that next step. We have to be willing to trust in ourselves, just like the fool, just like when he takes that step. He has to believe in himself and he has to trust in himself. And when Jupiter was going through um, Aries, that was action, right? So now when he's in Taurus, he's ready to ground that energy and to create. Um, now on the 28th, um, like I noted, uh, the sun is in, in this chart, you will see, the sun is in, he's pretty much having this little square. Um, right now he's, um, he's having a square with, uh, with Saturn. Here's Saturn and here's the sun. And this is, um, he's going to also have like a half square with, um, right there he is, and there's Mercury. So he's going to have like a half square with Mercury. Um, and this is, and Mercury is going to have a half square with um, Neptune. And you see where they are, okay? So, this is bringing in delusions. Um, this could be, as we are going through the end of this month, we're going to have to really be careful with this because there's going to be a lot of misinformation um, that's going to come, that's going to try to mislead us to incorrect facts. Um and, and it's it's the shift that's happening. There's there's a shift, and as this shift is happening, you know, more and more information is going to be coming out, and there's going to be more that's going to try to um, keep the keep it secret. Um, it, it's stuff that you know we were never supposed to know. So, but we are going into new territory. That's just the main part is that we are going into new territory and it can be, it can be a little scary because um, honestly, May energy is about getting your bearings together. <laughs> it's about getting, getting your bearings so we can go forward because as soon as um, June comes, we're really going to be hitting energy. Now, I was speaking about Mars and Jupiter because this is so important because, um, you know, this is connect Jupiter is connecting Mars with a higher vision. Um, and um, the moon will be um, the moon is up here in Leo. OK right next to right next to mars and you see before the moon got to mars he had to visit venus too so here when the moon was visiting venus in cancer oh this was some really good healing energy and this healing energy is passed to mars because when mars met with the moon um the moon brought that energy um with it okay so and this is really going to help. This movement here is helping Mars balance his emotional energy and um, going to help him see things from a more logical perspective because he's passing, the moon passes through very quickly. And as he is in Leo, he will begin to, you know, he's seeing things more logically. Um, it was on the 20, it was, you know, this is, I did this chart on the 24th, so you can see this conjunction right here. Uh, the Mars is at two degrees and the sun is at three degrees. So this conjunction is really bringing that um, more of emotional security. Um, it's, it's, we're gaining it inside. It's, it's a building up, right? 
as he went from that that deficit of being in cancer and moving into Leo, he stepped up. He was getting empowered again. And, you know, there's a lot of chaos, but creativity is born from uh, born from chaos, right? Um, chaos is... You know, you have to focus that creativity in order to make it into something real. Um, we have to use a lot of discernment with this because when Mars, um, when he was in cancer, he was really saying, is this worth fighting for? And as he moved into Jupiter, I mean, I'm sorry, as he moved into Leo and began his, um, began his aspect with Jupiter, um, that is going to empower him more. Leo, um, Leo just, um, he rekindled that inner flame in Mars that was dampened in Cancer. So, um, and this can be, this could be very revolutionary energy that can lead to evolution. Um, and that's what that meeting with Jupiter is about. Jupiter is about evolution. So revolution to have um, evolution. Um, and, you know, becoming free. And that's one thing is Mars is saying, you know, no more. I'm not having this. And again, like I've stated before with his, with his um, aspect with Pluto, this is really saying that, you know, you're not stepping on my toes anymore. You're not hurting me in order for you to gain. And anger right now is in our world big time, and that ignites our inner fire. Anger is a good thing. It can be used in a good way, but we have to be careful to use it in, you know, constructive ways instead of destructive ways. Going and burning down a city is not, is not a constructive, it's destructive. There's no growth there. Um... Yeah, sure, we can rebuild, but when you're burning a city down, you're not hurting those top-down structures. You're hurting little people. You're hurting the people that are that are striving. So that is not here. We're having to see this. We're having to see a bigger picture, a higher perspective. Um, you know, we have to say what is the lower vibration versus a higher vibration. And where do we wish to go? Do we wish to stay in this uh, destructive realm and never rise above and just going on and on? Or do we wish to rise above it, um, to let that die and to build off, you know, and, and to, to build it in a um, more stable way? So, um, and, you know, anger is, you know, when we feel anger, that is about, you know, feeling our limitations, feeling a boundary has been crossed, um, you know, and, and many people are at that point of what are we here for? And, um, you know, what will we not stand for anymore? Okay. Um, what will we not stand for any longer and stand up to those, um, whose rights are being taken away. Um, and it's, a, it, you know, definitely cleansing and healing here through the, all of this, you know, all of this Venus and, um, and Cancer with Mars and Cancer. Yeah. Um, and this is really about creating those new paths for the future. And I know that many of us has been hearing, hearing this and uh, are feeling this as well. It's, it's time to pave those new ways. You know, we like Mother Earth have seasons and um, sometimes it's very intense and sometimes it's not. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's time to rest and set back and to recover and then at other times it's time to shine and with Mars going into Leo it is time to shine um, and you know this is regarding the well-being of all not the well-being of a few but a well-being of all um, Jupiter uh, stepping up into our the, into Taurus and to the earth is saying that it's time to level up um, this is going, you know, Jupiter is about wisdom and spirituality. 
So it's about ways that we can better serve the earth. We can't serve the earth by doing something else that is more destructive and more harmful to the people. That is ridiculous. Um, that is why a lot of the stuff is, is not going forward is because it is not for the well-being of all. We have to really look at this. We can't, again, we have to see it from a higher perspective. And Jupiter is really aiding us into using our, using all the knowledge that we have acquired into, in making it, you know, um, making it work, using it, actually using it, the wisdom, the experience. Um, how can we serve the earth? So this is very supporting. I mean, Taurus energy is is our earth. So it's supporting us. It's supporting um, us in this endeavor here. And, you know, it's, you know, we're being urged to get, get to a higher level of thinking. Right? Um, Taurus is slow and steady, but it's also about being. Understand the importance of of being about the present of course we can think about the future we can plan for that that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about the art of just being present how many of you when you're having a conversation a face-to-face -face conversation with someone how many of you sit there and look them in the eyes that person is talking to you how many of you are fully present I have looked at, you know, speaking of the mother, the mother aspect of cancer, I have looked back as, um, all my life and, and whatnot and things that I have went through and how I have not given, um, people the attention that, that we should be giving them when they're talking to us. Our lives are so fast paced. We are forgetting that we are pushing it too fast. We have to slow down. We have to slow down. Um, when we observe, and the only way to be able to, you know, create, to fully create from that healthy place is to slow down enough to see what needs to be created. This is a very fertile time, guys. This is very fertile. But in order to see what really needs to be created, we have to slow down. Let's look at art. We have to look at the beauty of art again and how important that is. Um, also, um, you know, science, technology that can ease the unease, easiness, right? Not science and technology that's going to harm others and, and benefit only a few. I'm talking about the earth as a whole. Um, but I will say that through difficult times bring truly enlightened, uh, creation. So I'm, I'm very optimistic at this. What I'm seeing, yes, there's a lot of changes and there's a lot of stuff that's going on, but it's only calling us to the carpet to step up as humans, as we are humans and, and to recognize our humanness, the beauty of being a human. Um, and for those that are new to intuition, um, you could be feeling very overwhelmed at this time at all of this energy. Um, and even those that aren't, you could be feeling overwhelmed. But so I will say ground, ground, ground. That is go to the earth, go to the earth, go to nature, unplug, sit quietly, um, sit calm, sit in calmness, listen to music that's calming to you, um, meditate. You have to detach from that outside. Um, all of that outside noise right now. Um, you know, we really need to tap into that. So, um, yeah, that is that is so, it's so important right now. And as um, I'm going to add, you know, Pluto is at zero degrees. And that is a critical deg degree. And that has always been... Um, taught in astrology as um, that is a threshold. The zero degrees is a threshold into a different energy, into um, a newness. This is a, a rebirth, okay? Now, uh, Pluto will be moving back into, um, into Capricorn um, June the 11th, I believe. I'll cover that on a different, um, on a different video, but, and then it's going to go back into those, into those 
top down structures. He's going to be bringing some cleaning out again. Um, so yeah, but again, remember creation, you know, uh, there's very enlightened things that have um, come out of chaotic times. And I do believe that this will be one of those times when um, we will have great, great um, creations coming out of this. So I do, um, I do hold, I still am very optimistic over the energy to come. Yes, it's crazy. Yes, it's chaos. Um, but you know, that is about creation, right? That is creation. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Blessings.